it's Delaney. And it's Katie. And this is Classically Black Podcast. Where we talk all things classical music and being black in the profession. With trap beats playing in the background. Hey, y'all. Hey. You good over there? Oh, all right. My eyes heavy. I forgot my lines before we started this. <laughs> this is episode 31. I feel some type of way about that. <laughs> I've said this thing 31 times. I still can't remember. Well, really 32 if you can't. Atlantis. <gasps> I forgot about episode Atlantis. It's somewhere. I'm still holding out hope. It's somewhere in the ether. And when, when somebody it shows up on the iCloud in Thailand. So <laughs> what is this? Episode 30. What was it? Episode 29. 29. 29. No, it was 29 because you edited, edited the replacement. Didn't you? No, I feel like it was episode 27. Oh, okay. Because 29 goes out tomorrow. <laughs> you good over <laughs> it's, it's confusing because we've been trying to do stuff, so. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. What are we doing? News. We got a show to do. You got news? Sure. <laughs> um... <laughs> what we doing that reminds me of that episode the freaking the same one where you're like what we doing now <laughs> i don't know why that sent me it did um well first i'm not really gonna get into this because it's not really news i saw the headline and i was like oh and then i read it and um it's still good so i wanted to um put it out there for people um saxophonist branford marsalis of course Related to what um when marsalis of course um yeah he um, he's happening in twos right because we just talked about the mcgills the mcgills right the sharps so. our thing the browns my only child katie and Catherine and brown you're what's what <laughs> you're happened to Bradford? Ego. Bradford. oh my bad <laughs> um no but he just did this interview um and and some of it was personal but some of it was um about the relationship between jazz and classical music and like the disconnect in music education. Um, but the reason why I wasn't going to get like too much into it is because the, the format of the article is more like interview wise. Like it's not like just about that, mm. but I wanted to just bring it um, uh, to people's attention because like some of the things that he talked about, he talks more about like method and like um, how he thinks it could be like improved upon mm-hmm. um, in the conservatory setting and the school setting. But I think I thought it was really interesting, so I'll link it so that people can. Uh, I was about to say watch it. You you see me? Yeah, girl. Watch it. Watch the article. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. Okay. So then next, I totally did not even bring this up, but it's still gonna go, and so it's fine. Um. So from the top, which is you know um, ooh, Chile, uh, a a program on uh NPR. It's which, like the program. It's like you want from the top right that's it so that's like right. you said literally from the top from the top right so um and then it showcases uh outstanding young classically trained musicians um so kevin olasola who is uh probably best known for uh, being the beatboxer and cellist uh in pentatonix um oh yeah i'm like where does that name sound familiar yeah um he uh recently got a um partnered with from the top to create this program called um where music lives with kevin with kevin osola which is basically um it's a series of four short documentary style videos um that that reveal the personal side and um and you know some of the uh i guess like the the storytelling side of some up-and-coming musicians um, the first episode featured Ifitayo Ali Landing uh, in Chicago, and he went and hung out with her. She showed him some of the places like around that she likes to, you know, hang out at, ate with her family. They talked more about like her musical journey and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So um, he's doing that with um, three other young musicians. Um, they air on Thursdays. I feel like at this point, yeah, yeah, yeah. At this point, they're all actually available. Um, so they're all available on uh from the top dot org uh backslash uh where music lives and you should check it out because he out here doing a thing highlighting musicians. I'm I've only so far watched Tiffa Tiles episode because 
you know mm-hmm. so <laughs> school oh sadness oh i was me but um oh okay yeah but you should watch all of them i'm sure they're all great and i mean kevin yeah. is on all of them so <laughs> that's that's dope well, yeah i actually haven't i stopped like following the pentatonic so i mm-hmm. haven't i had no idea he was doing stuff like that that's you know, I knew of him before I knew of Pentatonix. Really? Or before I, yeah, just from my like Instagram Explorer page and stuff. Mm. Um, so yeah, I knew like of him, and I didn't really even make that connection until a little bit later. I feel like, but what is is he classically trained? I believe so. Yeah, I mean, not that it matters, but like, I mean, he plays well. He don't. He his plan doesn't offend me. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's dumb. I don't care what y'all be doing, but mm-hmm. I believe I believe he is. But I'm I, that's really I mean, he, just a guess. He plays in tune, so. So more than I can muster up these days. Not muster. Yeah, I'm glad you realize like how ridiculous you sound. What you mean? I don't even do nothing. You don't do nothing? Nope. <sighs> Alright, check out his program. <laughs> <laughs> and we can move on. Dang be a short episode let me not oh, for real. let me not jinx it please. but then again the one before this that's true we were done with the news in like four minutes but then oh really yeah okay mm. on to intermission the what intermission what is that intermission uh, oh, okay. keep up catch up mustard um so a lot of mustard <laughs> A lot of us have seen. I don't know. I can't can't assume. Sorry. You know what? You're petty for that because you're okay. Keep going. Petty for what? What I do? I'm not putting your business out here. Oh, oh you. Oh shoot, you caught that. Anyway, um, some of us I don't know have seen the Avengers Endgame. Is that what it's called? What's the first one called? Yeah. The Last Hurrah. What is what is the what is the first? <laughs> what is the first part called? The first part infinity stones the, the first this, the this is like the fourth one so the first one is just called avengers no no no. i mean like the first the previous movie yeah infinity war infinity war and this is one is the end game okay yes so the end game came out and we know that we know that thanos did stuff who thanos but what were you gonna say i said thanos before that i though. wasn't gonna say anything you paused i can't pause and collect my thoughts what are you collecting <laughs> anyway so thanos if you're not familiar with the plot i'm not even gonna run the plot down for you because i'm just I'm not a, a superhero person so I, can, I really something happens he snaps his fingers everybody's gone and they come back um so but when thanos snaps his fingers half of the population on the earth mm-hmm. disappears so delaney i want to know if you could be like thanos <sighs> and First of all, he ashy Big. and he purple. His his chin look like it done gone through a shredder. <laughs> it and didn't make it. Right. <laughs> you know how like when a shredder gets jammed? Yep. That's exactly what his chin look mm-hmm. like. And he look like he don't moisturize. He, he, take right. heat, ladies and gentlemen. That's he what happens when you don't. You no, know, he probably he a smell you ain't never smelled before. Oh, absolutely. Especially he don't look like he prioritized uh, showering. How could he look like that? how and also like he in space so probably everything exists in a vacuum oh that's mm-hmm. a black hole in it i don't know there ain't no sciences so he just don't look like he smell all the way right to me okay so why well, was gonna call you vena i forgot because vena was the host, the host last week okay delaney so if you could snap your fingers and get rid of one person piece or element of classical music what or who would it be and why well, Copeland can really gallop his way down <laughs> <I'm> out of here. <laughs> howdy. I mean, no, howdy's the opposite of howdy. D howdy. Take my heart to the all time road. I'm gonna ride till I can't no more. I don't know the rest. Oh, take my heart to the all time road. I'm gonna ride till I can't no more. Can't nobody tell me nothing. <laughs> nothing. Oh wow. That song is terrible. Why do kids like it? I think kids like whatever is new. <laughs> it's Okay, go ahead. Sorry, it's not. 
No, I mean, that's it. Bye. Is this not one piece by Copeland you like? Lasso up all your pieces and leave. <laughs> that's not one piece by Copeland you like. Not that I've heard. <gasps> I don't. Not every piece. I've only heard a few pieces by him. Mm-hmm. Not every single one of them makes me want to die. Mm-hmm. So. There are parts of. That's the the closest thing to a compliment he's getting from me. There are parts of Appalachian Hymn that I like. <clears throat> like the like the little <laughs> shaker melody. I mean, so it's not really fair because it's not his. But you know, right? He so write the best thing that he got, he ain't even write. Didn't what they do that at? Well, I mean, Rod- so. well, yes. Um, Rodeo's not terrible. I've played that. I don't like Rodeo. At all, actually. It's not it's not the worst thing by Copeland I've ever played. The worst thing by Copeland I've ever played was that clarinet concerto. <laughs> I literally this like Paul Clarinet Concerto. N- Ugh <laughs> my god, I've never ever ever felt that type of pain before. <laughs> pain? Pain. I gotta listen to this clarinet concerto now. Cause... It wasn't even just the sound, it was just being there. <laughs> Seeing it in that weird font that he insists. Oh yeah, he do got a font. He got a type. Ugh, my God. Why you got to be different? You know everybody's trying to be different, right? Doing as I'm much not... as they can with his little results. So well, you're already different because you worse. So <gasps> <laughs> you're not. Uh, I just think the concerto's terrible. It was a really terrible experience, and I could not wait for it to be over from the very beginning. So. <laughs> <laughs> like literally it was just to the point where every time he would pick the baton back up and be like can we just do i was just like was it here at eastman no it was at emf i thought you i thought you weren't in that cycle i was unfortunately um because you said there was something that you decided you were like deliberately like i'm not going to that no that was gonna be this summer that it was like a bunch of stuff but no i think i must listen to a little bit last like summer I literally the throw up was like creeping up my esophagus. Oh, I, I want to. I have to. These aren't. Okay, girl, go off. These aren't. Oh, okay. Stop looking at me. It sounds nice so far. Don't even sound nice. Okay, you heard three seconds of the whole concerto. Are you kidding? <laughs> okay, let me go over. Cause last time we got a copyright strike. Let me go ahead. This sound like Copeland. You need to get to that. All that. What's that about? I don't oh. remember. I suppressed it. <laughs> you go to cadenza. Oh, you talking about the last movement rather fast? <laughs> Why can't you just say a so over him rather fast? Shut up. <laughs> you know when you get that horse head on a stick and you just That's what it's like. <laughs> Ugh, I hate it. Nah, this ain't it. Oh so Let me ugly. Stop. we had a copyright strike, but uh, I forgot how ugly the melody was. It's even worse than I am, and I remember it. I don't mind the first movement. Why can't you just say Allegro like everybody else? Rather fast. That's not like your student. Why don't you just say what it is? Oh, <laughs> who was it? Um, is it uh, is it the the one who got into the school? No, no, no. the cellist. Oh. She said that? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. <laughs> she don't seem like she... I mean, she should be laughing when I be doing a lot, so... Dang. Um, For me, baby. Girl. I'm trying to think, yeah. like... Because I really want to say Debussy. Because I literally, like... When I used to be in conducting orchestra and I saw Debussy on a thing, I was like, why? You know, like, I just, like... I don't like playing his stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like... I mean, to say that, to snap... First of all, he was also terrible. So, I, I haven't... That's fine. Um, 
there's also other people that were representative of the impressionist movement so i feel like but he would probably like getting snapped away into dust because he would just disintegrate and be an impression of a person <laughs> instead of a solid i feel like being a <laughs> being a gas would work for him <laughs> yeah that's true so don't do him a favor leave him here or like a thought right like what what one a memory what? a memory a distant memory a dis- you, right one you don't even really remember like is this a memory or is it a dream yeah right that's what he would be yeah but not a dream a nightmare him or celieri whose competition just suck <laughs> like baby girl let it go <laughs> <laughs> put the pen down <laughs> <laughs> the ink will actually <laughs> a feather but i said last time goose blood <laughs> They had ink. <laughs> yeah, I think those are the only two composers that I could think of that like, ugh, it's annoying me. There's other ones like you know some obscure, obscure ones like on, on IMSLP. Mm-hmm. But what is this? I can't really think of none. But yeah. Okay. Um. What about a genre you listen to? Like, who is something you can get rid of? If you you would snap and it would just. Dang. And like, tell me the genre too. even know i mean that's fine too because it's like it's hard to it's hard to think like i feel like for composers i have much stronger opinions yeah. because you you have to play them sometimes mm-hmm. but for other genres if i don't like your music i don't have to listen to it so i just forget about you yeah so true. you know mm-hmm. so now i'm like dang who don't i like like someone who's problematic and what genre are you thinking r&b raspy problematic oh is raspy no. r&b yeah, I don't listen. You don't write listen to Raspberry. Yeah, and he and B two B two K. Girl, you know more than me. I don't know because the read they stay talking about them because of the tour. I I can't remember. Let me. Listen. I could I have the internet in front of me. Yeah, <laughs> I can't remember if Raspberry's in B. The listeners are like, yes, girl, he's in B two K. He's just somehow associated with them because he always comes up on the read. Because he might be in B two K. I just know he might be. Oh. <laughs> I didn't expect him to look like that. Yeah. Oh, he was a founding member of B2K. Oh, that's even worse. Ooh. Oh, here go his mugshot. That's why you shouldn't be putting hands on people. Ooh. You too grown for that. He 33? His name is Demario. I would act up. Oh. <laughs> oh, you know what? I just thought of an obvious one. R. Kelly. Oh, <laughs> shoot. <laughs> yeah, we'd be good without it. And especially now we have... How many times can I snap? <laughs> I'm gonna let you finish. Just okay. There you go. That's a that's our Kelly song. That was trifling <laughs> so many ways. <laughs> you suck for that. I let it go. Dang, did R. Kelly write ignition? I don't know if he wrote it, but that's his song. That sucks. I think. Well, a, can R. Kelly write? Okay, let's just go. Let's keep or going. read? He can't read. There's no way he. Someone, you know, you know how like you teach one of the, one of the teaching methods you learn in general music class is teaching by rote mm-hmm. because it's like a system. Someone probably taught that that song by rote to him. Mm-hmm. We're like whole part whole, teach the whole thing, then go stanza by stanza, then teach the whole thing again. Yeah, he like, or like he can read it like an elementary school level. Like his wife says so. His ex wife. Dang. I feel that's a bigger loss than Step in the Name of Love, in my opinion. Ignition? Yeah, to me. Yeah. Oh, well. I'll be <sighs> Would fine. it kill y'all to be decent? Mm. Yes. I guess, I, I guess so. I guess so. Because y'all will pick everything but the right way. So, every every path but the wrong one. Right. For me, honestly, like, mine's probably a little surprising. But, like, honestly, Nicki Minaj can go. I'm just I so... I about to know who. What? <laughs> <laughs> surprised to Maybe, know. Like the listeners. Because, oh, okay. like... Like, whatever, like, she's done a lot of, of good or whatever, but, like, in, like, the, whatever, rap, like, she, she, she's said a lot of, like, what's it called? She's achieved a lot. But, like, she, at this point, like, a lot of girls are, like, starting to rap, you know what I'm saying? Her, a lot of her success happened when Remy Ma was in prison. And, you know, Lil' Kim got old. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, Nicki Minaj came along and, like, swept the girls and that's fine and everything, but it's like the way that she's toxic to every other girl that 
that's trying to rap right now like it just makes me it's annoying like she's mm-hmm. she's just annoying like i could really do without Nicki minaj like period i could i could snap and be like yeah that's that's fine none for me and there's so other many other girls that do the same thing if you want a, a song about sex and okay i was gonna say a lot um <laughs> I forgot that I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to a lot of people. (laughs) (laughs) If you want a song about sex and all the type of stuff that your dude can do to you backwards and all the top and jumping off poles and, and getting your back broke. There are plenty of Cardi B. You can just follow Cardi B on Instagram. It's actually quite graphic. It's quite graphic. (laughs) Like Cardi B. It's too much. Cardi B is someone saying for the love of God, please text (laughs) the man you're married to. I was like, not for the love of God. I was like, people have had enough. I'm convinced that what that Offset has ran out of data. He, <laughs> he can only do stuff on his phone, right? On Wi-Fi. That's the only reason why we got to know everything. <laughs> like some stuff is cute. Like the other day, she was like, oh, "Sorry, a couple weeks ago, <laughs> she was like, um, oh my god, like her, uh, Offset bought her like some bags, like some Birkin bags or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like my husband's the best. Like that kind of stuff is cute to me or whatever because." Like he don't have to buy you nothing because you probably make more than him, you know. Mm-hmm. Like that kind of stuff, and and also her baby was in that video. Like she's so perfect. Like I've never seen such. And she was like, take that out your mouth, you know. <laughs> but like, um, that stuff is cute. But she when people were like commenting, I forgot what she wore. Like why her stomach looked like that. She was like, I can't even say what she said. But oh, was she got a tummy tuck. I don't know what she got, but she got Tommy oh, she did. Mm-hmm. It looked weird, low key, because it looked like she kind of have abs, but abs adjacent. But we, mm-hmm. I know you don't work out because every one of your Insta stories is you eating a Big Mac and a frappe. <laughs> Cardi B eats whatever she wants, and I stand, and I would too if I had all that money. Mm-hmm. But um, so don't take you. She she eats like, like a dumpster. I mean, I can I don't know if every meal is like that, mm-hmm. but like the stuff that she be eating, I'd be like, really? I I'd, I'd, I'd be surprised just because like you have to perform and like. At the end of the day, the older you get, because she's only a couple years older than me. The older you get. No, no she's, she's the age. same age. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> the older you get, it's like you have to care about what you put in your body. Especially if you have to perform like that. Mm-hmm. Like when I get around my recital, I stop eating crazy. Because I'm like, I have to stand up for an hour and a half. Um, I don't even eat crazy. You know how much you love sitting. <laughs> <laughs> but look at me going play my next recital. Sitting down. It's true, man. <laughs> you, dra- you dragging a chair behind you. <laughs> Not even picking it up. <laughs> but, um, whole black suite. I mean, I'll be like, y'all, it's 30 minutes. So, I'm gonna get comfy, too. Um, but yeah, I could do without, um, Nicholas Minaj. So, I mean, last time I heard Nicki Minaj's song was Pink Friday. So, wow. <laughs> I was like, super bass. Her, her song Chung Lee was just like annoying to me. I didn't like that. That's like the last time I listened to Mickey Minaj. Mickey Minaj. Nicki Minaj. <laughs> Mickey Minaj. And that was, Chung Lee came out like last year. And I'm talking to my friend Nisha. Like, Chung Lee slaps. I'm like, really? You think that's good? <laughs> the last thing I enjoyed by Nicki Minaj is still on my playlist is uh, Rake It Up. Whoever sings Rake It Up. Yeah. I tell all my hoes, Rake It Up. I just have to Google down. it because that song that was stuck in my head, I couldn't remember the title of it, but it was Your Love. That's also been Friday. Shiny, I'm only taking this one in the evening. Ba, 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 bo. Oh, you definitely in the Your love, your, your love. love. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think. Like, I just don't. Nicki Minaj, every time I. Sh- and, like, I'm just waiting to delete her. Like, I should go through my playlist because some stuff be on my. I have a playlist called My Inner Ratchet. I mean, right now it's like you're out of ratchet at this point. <laughs> I have to change the title of the playlist. Well, I'm like trying to think. Okay, I still like the remix with Beyonce when Beyonce still mess with her. I I am assuming that that's over because Beyonce knows better and doesn't have time. Because remember that there was a period of time where Nicki Minaj was in the news like every week, spazzing. Mm-hmm. Are you okay? You have so much money. So much. So much. <laughs> Your money has money. You make... She's rich because her she makes music when she's sleeping. I learned that from Felicia Rashad. When you're rich, your money works for you. Right. Her money is making money while she's asleep. And you care about what Cardi B's doing? Cardi B's a child. You care about what random people in your Instagram comments are doing. Exactly. Subtweeting and stuff, liking. Are you crazy? I'll Replying, be, DMing. I would be such a boring, famous person. 
I wouldn't do anything but enjoy my money and eat vegan burgers. And yeah, that's it. And crinkle fries. We got to talk about that later. Crinkle fries are so all right let us know who you would snap away um and yeah we are moving on all right y'all so all right y'all hear that devious laugh i was on facebook which i rarely am because it's for aunties no offense people who use facebook's not fun to me i scroll through and i'll be like all right girl and i came across um this article that uh was like a hundred ways white people can make life less frustrating for people of color and i was like hmm this looks interesting so i shared it with delaney and we just going there's a hundred there's literally a hundred ones um my girl casina boom she was um fed up so she wrote yeah some of these are loud some of them are loud and i will say um also the subtitle is just a few suggestions to start with i'm like sis not a few (laughs) this is not a few far cry from a few i will like to uh preface this by saying i mean like besides the fact that she's black like of course there's a a certain amount of bias i mean there's that doesn't change the fact that it's true Mm -hmm. everything said here is true but i will say that there's some stuff is some stuff is biased and like kind of sways the article just a little bit when she's she'll say like hurtful things as well about white people I'm like you can't do that if you're trying you know what i'm saying like yeah. your argument's weakened if you say da, 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 about the white people you guys i just i have yeah. a problem with that like some of them i i was like sis because excuse your what what like what is the goal of of this is it is it for people to actually take your suggestions or is it to just be like well y'all need to you know right because people if you keep doing stuff like that she does it a couple of times and it'll be linked of course but she does it a couple of times and i'm just like if i couldn't read around that mm-hmm. like no one's gonna take this seriously yeah. like some of the stuff some of the stuff it was just like it rang a little prejudice, but like at the heart of this article is like some of y'all do a lot. So we're just going to go talk about a few that stuck out to us. And then of course we're going to wrap it around to classical music. So enjoy the ride. Here we go. Buckle up. <laughs> um, <I'll> buckle. <laughs> okay. The first one that stuck out to me was the very first one. Um, and that's number one, just because you can't see racism, racism around you doesn't mean it's not happening. Trust people of color's assessment of a situation you have that one yeah i also did have that one so for me that stuck out to me that reminded me of something that happened here at eastman one of the students <clears throat> eastman oh uh, you're probably aware maybe not i don't know i think they do a good try to do a good job of like keeping it whatever but it's in the, the democratic chronicle like it's whatever oh. so eastman's been having some problems with um just they're just trying to refine the security policies at, at eastman i'll just say that and so one of the things that they did for like a smooth week was um <laughs> id students who are coming in regardless and <clears throat> it could be a little frustrating because like i I know the security guards i don't even know how they know me because i don't even be at school oh well i take that back i know how they know me um sorry <laughs> i almost lost <laughs> okay, i was caught robbing the <laughs> no i'm just kidding <laughs> robbing a harp <laughs> on my back <laughs> Um, I know how they know me. I'm sure they know all of us. But, um, uh, so what, what thing I was mad about is I saw another student go in front of me and did an ID. And then I was already late as I normally am. And, (laughs) um, they were like ID. And I was like, I feel some type of way about that because if you're going to ID, if you're going to ID me, you must ID everyone. So one student a friend of ours had a similar complaint. So they brought it to somebody who should care about those kinds of things. And he, that person just brushed him off. Like, I don't know what you want us to do about it. And I'm like, maybe while it wasn't inherently racist, it's like, you cannot, you cannot brush black people off for having concerns about stuff like that. Especially, like I said before on this podcast in this country that was founded on racism. I just feel like it's just like, Ugh, to me i just i didn't like that so mm-hmm. definitely number one i was like oh she on a roll already go ahead girl <laughs> oh so my first my first one after that is number nine however it 
the reason why I picked it kind of ties in with your next one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so number nine is regardless as um, autonomous, unique individuals, not as representatives of our race. Mm -hmm. So I get that a lot here because I'm president of Black Students at Eastman. And not like obviously I'm president, like I have responsibilities, I am the person to reach out to. But even before that, and just the the nature of which like the things that people reach out to me like for is not necessarily like black things that just be like anything they want to put a little ethnic twist on they're like so delaney how do we and how do we frame this yeah how do and we how navigate we, yeah they love a good navigate <laughs> oh my goodness get a gps <laughs> how do we all y'all got smartphones this and and one thing like at first it didn't bother me until i started dealing with my own stuff and i was like i literally cannot keep up Mm -hmm. with with every single thing that you guys have i'm not the only not only am i not the only black person that goes here i'm not the only person of color because when people think people of color they're like well black people are outspoken let's ask a black person yeah and then then they're like well who's the head black person you know (laughs) that we can (laughs) pick and then it's just like but I don't want, I've had multiple situations where I've been asked to do the same thing multiple times, speak at the same event multiple times. I'm like, people, other people have stories that deserve to be heard and shared. Why are you asking me for the third time? And you're not this? speaking on behalf of the black race. Exactly. Like I'm, I'm w- one person, right? you know, and, and b- even though I'm in a leadership role, I'm not always going to be in a leadership role. Mm-hmm. And, I don't need, I feel like it's, it's important for people to be, you know, treated like their black experience matters. Cause it's not the same. Right. There's literally not one single person here at Eastman that has the same black experience as another person. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. but I think that's, that's like kind of goes in with yours. Um, yeah, it's actually, it's almost the same. Like don't assume that all people of color share the same views. We are not a monolith. And I think, I mean, even if it doesn't come from a a bad place, it's like, we don't, the thing I loved the most about doing the grad picture is like, if you don't know me and my extraness, I just rounded up all the black people that, (laughs) that were graduating. I'm like, y'all, let's take a picture. Come in nice black, whatever. And like, everybody there was so different, Mm -hmm. you know, like everybody, everybody has different interests. Like one of the students um, is interested is getting another master's in in new music um there's interest in in that's a new music i meant old music like mm. what's it called music. Early, early, music. Music. early music we all come from different spot places like we all have different values different political views you know it's like the gamut who oh okay <laughs> <laughs> so it's like but i was looking at them like yo black people are so different like and probably the closest like me and richard are just like yeah man you know da, 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 like da, da, da. like just saying dumb stuff but like you know isaiah over there saying big words and like you know like everybody every different okay um one thing one thing that stuck out to me because i was just like no nah. yeah me too you talking about number 15 oh no i was talking about number 13 oh okay avoid phrases like but I have a black friend. I can't be racist. Y'all people say that. Hmm? People say that. People do say that. I don't think anyone said that to me directly, but I've definitely seen it been said. You are racist, especially for saying that. That literally makes people you... think just because the side of a black person may not make you physically sick that <laughs> you're not <laughs> you're not racist. Like, I'm like there are all different types of ways exactly to be racist. What's another one? And just because you just My because bad. you uh tolerate being around black tolerate. people um does not mean that you're some type of saint that uh we can depend on and we you just savior of all of us boy if you don't i'm surprised people still use the word tolerate i feel like that was that was around recently when i was like tolerating is not a good thing yeah like tolerate yeah like when you have to tolerate somebody yeah that's like I'll put up with you. Yeah, like a tolerating music theory because I have to do it. Right. That, if I must. Yeah, if I must. <laughs> like if you, if there must be black people here, I guess. <laughs> Ugh. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll yeah. 
So my next one is a quick one. It's, it's number 18. It's when you find instances of racist bullshit online, please don't send it to us. We know racism exists. Thanks. People send you stuff yeah. online. My goodness. Girl, who you be following online? I have a, a friend and and it, it stopped after I told her I was like, sis, I don't care. When um Imagine how she'd be I, like she probably felt dumb. When she's like she'll be like did you see what Donald Trump tweeted this week? No. No. Why would I? Who's following Donald Trump on Twitter? First of all, it's going to be it's going to be one of three things or all three. It's going to be <laughs> racist, stupid, or ignorant or, you know, all the above. Right. Usually all the above. Usually. If it's not outside of that realm, if it's a policy change, if it's something that was revolutionary that we had never expected him to tweet before, then you can hit me up about what Donald Trump is, treat- is tweeting. But at this point, it's just variations on the same. Why do I need to right. <laughs> why do I need to <laughs> hear what the latest thing did you hear what he said about black history month? I don't first of all, he is the last person on earth who I care about his his opinion on black history month. Are you I kidding? Mean, it's probably in his best interest not to say anything. We already know your opinion. Because he said something I remember, I think on his first um in in his first year, he said something about black his during Black History Month. And I was like, of all the people to be looking at quotes from him in during Black History Month, I'm not going to waste my eyeball juice on him. Eyeball juice? Yes, my eyeball juice when you blink and it replenishes. I'd rather my eyes dry out to a crisp. To a crisp. A crisp. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> <laughs> wow um uh number 17 never try and tell a, a person of color what is or isn't racist Ooh. that goes back to what i said before it's probably racist i mean like some people just come some people come innocently but where they even where they came from innocently is based on probably some racist idea mm-hmm. like and not, i'm not saying that you're everybody like all white people are racist i wouldn't that's something we can unpack on a different day. I might, I wouldn't say that. I'm just saying that like, I remember, I remember uh, my students came to me and they were like, one time when I was teaching public school, they were like, Miss Brown, Miss so-and-so let all the white kids out first. And she's so racist. And da, 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 da. And I was just like, I just deescalated it, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to tell them she's not racist mm-hmm. because it's like, you'll, you, they have their entire lives to hear someone try to tell them something's not racist. Mm-hmm. But is I just don't like that. Like we, I think we know, you know. Uh, what's one mm-hmm. you got? Um, I have number twenty six, um, which I think is something that a lot of people overlook. Even, even black and brown people overlook. Uh, have a critical eye when watching TV and movies. How are they portraying people of color, and why? What purpose does it serve? Mm-hmm. I feel like, uh, so many of the of the implicit biases that people have come from things like media and like how yeah. you're portrayed because like I've said, I've said this a bunch of times you can very much tell when someone has never met a black person before yeah and they're like how do I navigate this situation navigate <laughs> <laughs> oh um, and and a lot of times the only thing they're going off of is well i saw that loving hip-hop preview Ooh, and right you know uninformed like assumption exactly you know you remember that movie that i told you i was watching what was it called someone to like someone to love it was on netflix i texted you oh, like, this oh someone someone great someone great i watched it too um and i don't know if you remember but in the black girl's room first mm-hmm. of all she was she was black and she was queer mm-hmm. and she had um a poster <laughs> of elvis on her wall huh <laughs> so you could tell when there's no black people in the room you can just tell and don't tell me she liked elvis i don't want to hear it <laughs> i don't want to hear it um i'm gonna skip down a little bit let's see hmm. looky here <laughs> oh my favorite number 46 don't touch our effing hair Oop. That goes. I'm not saying Nathan else on that one. Not just period. Just period. Period. I'm not, I I'm gonna stick to it. I'm not saying nothing else. What you got? Period. <laughs> Baby girl. Hi. Shout out to my student. Me. <laughs> when she said Miss Brown, Baby Girl. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I I give up. I cannot control her. Baby. Girl. When I was like, now hold up. And my and um one of my acquaintances. A friend of a friend, he was like, please tell me she said it in the B. Simone voice. I'm like, yes. <laughs> baby, Miss Brown, baby, girl. <laughs> I give up. Um, My next one is number 58. Um, Confront your colleagues who say racist 
things unchecked at work. Yeah, I have that one too. First of, first of all, why are you not? Okay, so I went through safe zone training and bias training and stereotypes training for a job that I had. And one of the one of the exercises was people they had to um they had to basically raise their hand no they didn't have to raise their hand they had to go to a section of the room labeled uh based off of their level of comfort with um like calling someone out in a certain situation Mm -hmm. so would you feel like yeah that's fine would you feel like no i'm not doing it or maybe you know i would want to but i'm apprehensive about Mm -hmm. it and of course you know i was all up in the right in the because but um i feel like a lot of people I, I explained this at a panel that I talked on recently because hmm. it's my mother. I don't care. Get up. Because I didn't respond to her yet. It's Mother's Day. So. Um, but I told her Happy Mother's Day oh, already. Right, it was right, about right. something else. But, um, oh, dang, now I lost my train of thought. Training. Then you... Oh, yeah. Um, calling people out when they say racist stuff like, okay, I it's yo some people are like well it's my acquaintance it's my friend or whatever i don't want to cause no tension first of all they already cause tension they're causing exactly. tension for somebody who literally based off of something that they cannot change exactly and did not choose and you ain't you don't care about no tension then right um you just gonna you know mouse your way through it mm-hmm. to the end and second of all i don't care who it who it is if that's someone that you considered a friend whatever you don't want a friend that's gonna talk like that anyway exactly cut them off wow. i literally sat there on the panel i was like cut them off it's it's that easy yeah it's actually quite refreshing wow good drink of cold ice water or or cold um seltzer water or pineapple or on to the next <laughs> um oh this one was interesting refuse to speak on all white panels number 62 regardless of the topic i thought this was cool because it's like um what we were saying earlier about like how y'all how people are making decisions with no people of color in the room mm, how yeah. that's what happened with, at the strat that's why y'all ended up with that article looking, looking crazy <laughs> looking crazy imagine if you had one person of color because when i tell you when i the second i saw that i screenshot it i was like they're gonna take this down yeah i'm like imagine <laughs> if you had one latina sis on there that was like just one just one and she was like y'all I could not do that. Oh, y'all are exasperating. <sighs> Chile. Um, number sixty three. Um, if there and this is kind of tied into I think the first one I did. If there are only a couple of people of color in your seminar, don't weirdly stare at them when a lecturer poses questions about race and expect them to answer everything. So I've been. Oh God, where pr- is this going? <laughs> no, 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 no. I've been. I usually don't talk to the end of things anyway because it takes me a while to gather up. You know, Mm -hmm. you constantly think and it takes me a while to gather up my thoughts on what I'm thinking about what everybody's saying. But it'd be so... I'd be sitting back, scanning the room, Mm -hmm. like, what y'all finna say? Yeah. You know? Because, um... It's not really people... Like, there's been a... There's been people debating, like, well we need more voices of people of color and then other people like well it's not our job to blah 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 and um i would i think it's been it's been interesting to to uh to sit back and let them say what they're gonna say and then come in and you know knock the house down so i'm telling you bringing up the rear i said i forgot what the conversation was when i was in my ed seminar and they going back and forth and going back and forth i'm just listening to them what they got to say and i was like um I said something about this country being founded on racism and it, what, what else you gonna say after that? I feel like they forget that. It's not even like guilting white people into, you know, being, I'm one of the point, one of the ones on, are you done? I thought you were tired. One of the one, one of the points on this list was like, don't dwell in white guilt. It's like, it's pointless like mm-hmm. no one's no one's making you feel guilty mm-hmm. no one no one wants to make you feel guilty mm-hmm. like i i have no i have no interest in making white people feel guilty i have interest in seeing change mm-hmm. and how how y'all navigate black people and <laughs> <laughs> and it starts there with realizing like yo this country is messed up ain't no parts of there's few parts of it that's good mm-hmm. well 
There's some some, some parts that's good. Mm. Right, like, like the, the outskirts, meat. like the meat is pie store, and like new vegan. Definitely in Washington DC. Well, let's just move on to the next one. And like Butler let's University, just move on to the next one. Where let's move on founded. to the next one to the Sigma Gamma Rho Blue and Go on my mind all the time. Yep. <laughs> Number 77, um, stand up to Islamophobia whenever you see it at Just Hilarious. Uh, I hate, like I think I said last week or t- oh, two weeks ago, I hate when marginalized people marginalize. We ridiculous. all ain't white, sis. You look dumb. Ridiculous. Huh. Because somebody locking their doors when you walk past their car. Exactly. So, <laughs> you look ridiculous. Boo boo the fool. So. That you're continuing that. Um, I jumped way down. You can go back if you want. Oh uh, no, 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 no! I was looking for my favorite one. Oh god! But it's skipping a lot. But this is my favorite. One. This is one that took my breath away. I was like, "Yo, you good, <laughs> sis?" <laughs> um, and it's number ninety-six. Y'all get ready. Lean in. Lean in. Turn your volume all the way. Up. Oh, I love this one. And it's kind of going with number eighty-nine. I mean, um, all right, here we go. Buckle up. Understand that nothing in your life has been untouched by your whiteness. Everything you have, everything would have been harder to come by if you had not been born white. (laughs) Just let that sit. And before y'all get to, well, <laughs> it's just true. My audition was blind. Well, how you get there? How you get to your blind audition at the mid? The whole path leading up to that. And don't do that be- that annoying stuff where it's like, well, I'm white and poor, so da 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 da. Like, no, you still have access to things mm-hmm. as a white person. And like, and like what you said in the, in the guise of classical music, like there are certain steps that you have taken that your parents knew to take, mm-hmm. that they knew how to get around the system and work the system that we just don't have access to. And that was actually another one that um I missed was that like it had a bunch of different uh, minorities and was like your womanhood, your queerness, your uh, yeah. class, your uh, disabledness does not you know uh does not affect your whiteness yeah like it's that doesn't mean that you still don't benefit from white privilege yeah just because you have some intersectional identity so um just because i've been on this kick lately (laughs) number 89 is one of my favorites it says understand that america has what it has because it stole land from indigenous people and oh whoo and stole people from Africa. People. Stole. You stole people. And you stole land. Not only did you steal land and told them to move, you you made them sick. And like, yep, this looks great. Set up shop right here. You can move. Th- thanks. Actually, not thanks. Oh, All right. Now we need some people to work the land and build the country. So let's go get them. They're just free. We can just round them up and put them on a ship and you know cut our losses when we get there and go back which is dumb because you could have just stayed in africa where all the resources are you could do it yourself you know how like when you you know how like when you i don't know if this ever happened to you but sometimes your washing machine won't spin out all the way so like you, you might take a t-shirt out and sopping wet so you gotta wring it out imagine africa and they just took it and twisted and wrung mm-hmm. it out and then they you know when they twist it up and then they smack that's what they did to like south america or something with africa yeah it's it's insane and you wonder why africa is going through what's going through because of y'all recently apartheid just ended <laughs> okay very recently um how about this um you have any more no that was my life. okay um so 
some of the ones to me that apply to classical music, let's bring it back, right? So we all have faced some type of microaggression in classical music. At least I have. What's one that you... Well, I talked about... um one with the whole people looking at you and assuming some you know assuming stuff about you like when i went to music festival and wasn't nobody talking to me was nobody paying me no mind mm-hmm. and then i played in studio class and they were like oh she could play so now you're finna talk to me yeah what about me what what about me made you think oh was she not worth talking to before you hear me play but meanwhile you frolicking with jimmy over there not jimmy, jimmy <laughs> over there or tad yeah you you fright <laughs> You frolicking with Tad over there well before he picks up his bass to play in studio class. I don't get it. Mm-hmm. And um, and another one with, I mean, I've told you this before, with someone implying that me being black is one of the reasons why I got into Eastman. Yeah, that's mine too. That, that kind of stuff, like someone saying that you got something because you're black. You know, I've definitely, I've gotten that before. Mm-hmm. Like, um, yo... That's cute. How'd you get that to do it? You can customize your vibration. Oh, you can? Yeah, you can go in and get your screen. You can tap whatever. It used to be 1812. I used to, yeah. Oh, da 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 Yeah, we got annoying. I bet. Yeah. To do that. You know, I should be, it should be Mendelssohn. So it's a constant reminder. All right. Um, I just remembered that I had a friend. I can't believe she was my friend. Wow, that's crazy, dog. So, my... Wow. This is crazy. My... Everyone knows from my undergrad that I had a really hard time with the orchestra director because I have never... I was never in such a serious orchestra before. Like, I didn't do youth orchestra or whatever. So, when I got to to college, it was so difficult for me. The music was way too hard. I was just whatever. And then he'll, he'll call you out. Be like you, you look clueless. <laughs> yeah, he'll be like, it wasn't as bad as I heard that they do at Juilliard. Someone can correct me, but I heard they'd be like, a uh, second stand viola play. You know, oh, that type of stuff. Really? Yeah. Just to check. I do. Yeah. I won't do stuff like that because it's traumatizing the kids. But yeah. like I told you, I mean, I I called out some second. I I knew second violins in a particular orchestra weren't doing what they're supposed to do, so I asked them to play, and I just stared at the ones who I, who couldn't play. But that's the most. That's as far as I'm going because it's traumatizing. Why would I if I if I know you can't play it? Mm-hmm. Why would I ask you? That's to play? sick. Low key, sick. you're just watching them struggle. <laughs> like, yo, you good? You okay? Sadistic. Um, but so things curled over with Miss Doc, with Doctor Block, and I whatever. I worked really hard. I got better. Blase blase whoop de boo. He went to Eastman. We still talk to this day, and. In my second year there, this this girl who was my friend was like, oh, he only likes you because you're black. And I was like, that doesn't make sense. First of all, never mind. Maybe I'm he don't like you because you smell like you're in back sis. <laughs> <laughs> Like, just like junk like that. Like, just thinking that you get something because you're black. Like, that's not how it works. It just it just doesn't. Um but some of those ones, just to bring it back around, some of these ones that reminded me of some stuff in classical music um, is like a number 24, read books by people of color. I recommend Sister, Outsider, uh, The New Jim Crow, and Literally Everything by Junot Diaz writes for great insights in, into blackness. And that reminded me of like program works by black composers. Mm-hmm. Um, just because you should not because you need a piece for Black History Month, but because the girls are out here writing. Um, do you have one? It's true. Um, I think I mean the first one um that we that we talked about already um was just because you can't you can't see racism around you doesn't mean it's not happening. White people rarely see racism. Yeah. In the, in the most common forms yeah. that ha- that happen today. Like, of course, you're going to see if somebody blatantly calling me out my name yeah. and burning a cross in front of my practice room. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Could you imagine? Of course, <laughs> like, of course, you're going to see that. That's blatant racism. But in the... the <laughs> what? I'm just picturing what that was. First of all, you dumb. <laughs> what? 
not only do you go to jail for attempted arson <laughs> um but but in the ways in which racism manifests itself well the ways in which people manifest racism mm-hmm. um then like every single day are are often the ways that white people don't notice mm-hmm. because they don't have to so i think that people just noticing or or being more aware of like of the signs being more aware of what microaggressions look like um would would make it easier well yeah would make it easier for people to understand that it's happening yeah because so many people were like i don't see nothing so y'all must be lying and Mm. it's an imp and i'm so tired of you and richard with this let it go (laughs) i wasn't even the one i was just there you was Bert. <laughs> <laughs> he was the one that brought up the hip. Um, but yeah. Um, one for me that really struck a chord with me is like struck a chord. Come on, pun. Da, 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 da. That's not a mortgage. <laughs> okay. If you are in charge of making curricula, make sure that there is a Come work. On, it's I'm reading the word that she said. <laughs> You're so annoying. I'm a pedagogue. Make sure there's a work by people of color. So this just reminds me, like, as an, as an educators, we have educators who listen. Like making sure that your works, like, there, it's hard when you're teaching public school or teaching period because a lot of the works written by black composers are challenging. Like I don't, I can't see myself doing Hiawatha at the high school level. By uh, Coleridge Taylor, that John goes. Maybe, maybe parts of it. High Watts is also long. Um, but also just exploring, ex- exploring, exposing your students to um, to music um, works written by Black composers. Like especially, if you have a private studio. Uh, William Grant Still wrote, wrote a bunch of stuff, or just he wrote spirituals. Make them play that, you know, just like stuff like that. One thing. So yeah, let us know your thoughts on this. We're gonna drop the link. You can read it. It's this one in, to be right. honest. I might get number ninety six framed on my wall, honestly. So I mean I should put on my practice room door. Now I really get a cross outside thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah. Uh let us know what you think and we are moving on. To black excellence. Black excellence where we hype you up, gas you up, and give you your props because there's room for everybody at the top. And this week I'm talking about Melissa White um one of my dear dear friends i freaking love her like she is just like everybody know melissa white like she's just like great um if you don't know melissa white sorry assumption um (laughs) melissa white is a violinist um she's from michigan Uh, let me find the exact city um forgot i'm pretty sure it's uh because it's close to chicago or close enough to chicago because her mom used to like take her to the music institute of chicago Mm. which is not even in chicago it's actually north of chicago and like winneka oh you don't know what that means winneka is like (laughs) (laughs) yeah but it's like to get to chicago is one thing to go then to winneka is like another 30 minutes on top of that so her mom was doing the thing you know um she won the sphinx competition I should get a year citation for this, but it doesn't say on her website. But she won the Sphinx competition, and now she just she's just been killing the game ever since. She went to Curtis um, Institute and New England Conservatory, and right now she's she's one of the founding she's a founding member of the Harlem String Quartet, um, and she's doing a lot of work with her like violin yoga fusion um, project called Intermission, and she just won Think Tank at Sphinx earlier this year. Um, I stand Melissa White. She's like so, um, just so personable, so nice. I met her at, um, what's that camp that I suppressed? Um, High Fits. I met her at High Fits and she joined me for dinner one day and then that's it. I text her sometimes to complain about things, but um i'll link her website and her instagram you can check her out um she's great i love her dearly um and well deserving of literally one of the epitomes of black excellence um hey melissa okay who you got for piece of the week who you got well yes i guess i guess a composer (laughs) um 
That's a good question because I pulled it up and of course I forgot already. Last time did I check? It was five chains on my neck. There's no smut on my rep. Last time did I check? I was being a hundred cent nigga quarter million. No sweat. Last time did I check? Last time did I check? First get the money, then respect, then the power, and the hoes come next. Last time did I check? What a bop. Alrighty. Oh, well, I remember now. You're gonna love it. I'm not. We'll see. Well, you told me that you weren't gonna play it because it's cursed. Oh, it's, it's arpeggio. Yeah, it's arpeggio. <laughs> I want to learn it, but like, I'm, I will never perform it. One, it's I... cursed. There is not one person in my in my studio from undergrad that. But pl- that's, that was the end, isn't it? I guess I played that piece and something didn't go wrong. What go wrong? Like what? Like didn't wasn't played well, and my friend. Okay, but this. Okay, <laughs> my friend. I told you about her poster board because my teacher refused to have two stands. I'm not going to say what I really want to say. So, <laughs> um, so she, yeah, hey, wait. what do you want to say? Just in case this is a random episode she clicks on. Cause she said she was going podcast. So I just think the, 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 how much you went through to not have it be on two stands. Remember, cause we did, I got some two stands and Mr. Mm-hmm. Taylor was like, huh? Just let me know the way. A lot of a lot of other stands. It's a lot of stands up there. And we're like, yep. And he was like, okay. Right. Was, to me, I'm like, yeah, like eyesore or whatever. But it, at the end it of the day, why? Doing, you want to hear the piece or not? Yeah. <laughs> Is that uh, hear the piece? <laughs> hear it in full. Right. Not Without, with the uh, intermission. Okay, she's Jora in the middle. <laughs> Shut up. So <laughs> her post like fell on her when she was. It looked and also it looked ridiculous. Yeah. But people do post awards. I'd rather you have two stands. Mm-hmm. So my teacher says that the Dittersdorf concerto was cursed for him. He's done a bunch like couple performances that I've like every time go every single time something goes wrong. Like the one like he did a Halloween episode on this podcast about the curse of that concerto. Oh my god. I remember one time he said he went he was he went to play it he went he was in his dressing room before the performance you know got dressed he's the bathroom whatever he was fine good to go um he was playing the concerto i think he was in the last movement by at this point and the he sees like there's stuff going on in the back of the orchestra like people are moving around and but the people are still playing but they like something's going yeah, on. Something going. they scooting and stuff and then the the conductor is still conducting and bends over and is like you gotta play faster you flooded the bathroom. Oh, he the bubbled. stage is fl- all right. <laughs> He's like the stage is flooding. Oh my you God. have to play the fat. You have to play it faster. And he totally he missed the sign on the bathroom that said it was out of order. <gasps> he missed it anyway, oh, and it flooded the stage. No. And immediately when he finished it, everybody had to evacuate. <laughs> Well, that's just one of the instances. Wow. I'm plug his episode. It's on Contrabase Conversations, which is a podcast. With Jason um, Heath, right? Yeah. Um, it's I wonder if Jason the, Heath is still teaching public school. Mm, He's yeah. a huge name Traveling. in music ed, period. Mm. He, um, the episode is a Halloween episode, I think from, I think he re-released it this past Halloween, but I think it was originally released last, 2017, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. Anyway, it's not the piece of the week. The piece of the week is. And of course, I'll link a recording of a bass player playing it. Oh, yeah, that's smart. Um, but t- we're not going to act like that third movement don't go. When the when it gets all fast and the electro come on. Yeah, he did that. Cause Schubert was like, "Sis, why must you play this instrument?" He was like, "Girl, this is my instrument, the arpeggioni." He was like, "Girl, write something." He was like, "All right, bet." Came up with that. Go ahead, Schubert. What he he ain't. I don't think he was the goat. But he mm-hmm. definitely like 
yeah. on the list yeah. of consideration. Mm-hmm. I forgot that he wrote that piece. Hmm. He was out here. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. yeah. All right, <laughs> let's go. Cause the episode's over. <laughs> great talking to. <laughs> it's great talking to you guys. Can't say the same for Katie. Um, uh, <laughs> thank you for listening to Class Clue Black Podcast. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Class Clue Black Podcast. Don't forget to send us intermission ideas, black excellence suggestions uh, to classlyblackpodcast at gmail.com. And we will talk to y'all all next week. All right. Bye, y'all. Bye.